I can't believe it. Oh, Mike. I was on TV! Ah, did you see me? Pixar movies are known for their amazing characters, stories, animation, and Easter eggs. From recurring brands to reused models and little teasers for future films, there is so much love put into each movie, and it's that love and attention to detail that makes every rewatch just as magical as the first. In just a few hours, you'll be sitting around a campfire with Andy making delicious hot schmoes. They're called s'mores, Buzz. Right, right, of course. One of the Easter eggs that Pixar loves to include is an homage to their first ever short, Luxo Jr. While the lamp became a key part of their logo and appears in some of the movies, it's the ball with the orange star and blue stripe that really started making cameo appearances. It helped Buzz fly in Toy Story and was one of the toys that Boo and the little girl from Up had in their playroom. But that little girl didn't just have the blue striped ball in her room. On the other side by her bed is a familiar looking teddy bear. While Lotso wouldn't be introduced until Toy Story 3 came out a year later, it's clearly a Lotso hugging bear sitting by her bed. It took a whole year for people to realize that this was a teaser, but when they did, we couldn't help but wonder if he was secretly waiting for a moment to start moving around. Another Pixar staple is the one Chinese food box. Not only is it enjoyed by Riley's family in Inside Out and The Incredibles, but it seemed to be Linguini's go-to place to eat in Ratatouille, if his fridge is anything to go by, that is. But it's not just humans who love this Chinese food place. The first time the box made an appearance in a Pixar film was actually in A Bug's Life. Manny used the box as his Cabinet of Metamorphosis act, and the unnamed restaurant has been providing Pixar characters with noodly goodness ever since. Of course, the most iconic Pixar restaurant, not including Gusteau's, has to be Pizza Planet. The franchise first appeared in Toy Story, and the famous yellow truck with a rocket has been in all but one Pixar movie since. Even films set in the past somehow managed to get the truck in. The Good Dinosaur has the truck hidden in the background of the meteors for a second at the start of the movie, and Brave has a carving of the truck in the witch's hut. Incredibly, it's only The Incredibles that doesn't have the Pizza Planet truck because apparently supers don't get to enjoy a nice slice of pizza. Then again, the truck did manage to make its way into the video game version of the movie that was released in 2004 for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox, so I guess in that way, the truck has been everywhere. Oh, all this packing makes me hungry. What would you say to dinner at, uh, oh, Pizza Planet? Pizza Planet? Oh, cool! But the biggest business in the Pixar universe has to be, by and large. In Wally, -E, the company promised to clean up Earth while humanity fled to space. But the rest of BNL's appearances aren't quite as grand. The company logo can be seen around racetracks in Cars 3, and even on the batteries that power up Buzz in Toy Story 3. With such a wide variety of products, it's not exactly clear what by and large specializes in. Is it aerospace engineering, electronics? Well, whatever it is, it certainly made them a lot of money if they can support taking all of humanity to space. Ooh, should have gotten on those stocks a while back. At first, it didn't seem like Coco would have as many references as the rest of the Pixar catalog, with it being set in the Land of the Dead. Any Easter eggs they could have come up with could have become really depressing really fast. But, like always, Pixar found a way. An afterlife cinema, where the Incredibles movie poster can be seen on the wall. The image has been changed from the one we're most familiar with, the characters' faces are looking a lot more skeletal than in the original one, which uh, certainly raises some pretty morbid questions. But that's not the only familiar face seen in a Pixar movie. When Dory reaches the aquarium in Finding Dory, she comes across some kids on a school trip that would look familiar to anyone who's watched Inside Out. Instead of just making all new human models, Pixar reused the kids from Riley's class, including Riley herself. It's not clear when Finding Dory is compared to Inside Out, but it's clear that this is just another happy memory to add to Riley's collection. The most unexpected character sighting in a Pixar movie has to be in Brave. While he doesn't make a physical appearance, Sully from Monsters, Inc. can be seen inside of the witch's hut. It's hard to spot amongst the endless bear carvings, but when the broom runs away from the crow, you can just about make out the carvings in front of the shelves. This could be a small Easter egg or a small teaser for Monsters University. But it's interesting that the person with the carving can also travel through doorways, just like the monsters can. If the witch happened to cross Sully, she may have started emulating him in her work. After all, if it wasn't for the tail, he would just look like a bear. Or maybe their connection runs a bit deeper. Of course, when it comes to odd cameos, there's always Doug in France. 
When Remy is running around the apartment buildings after getting separated from everyone, he is scared by a dog barking at him. While only the dog's shadow is shown, it's a familiar sight. And while it's not exactly clear how Doug would have gotten from an apartment in France to Carl's porch, it's still a good thing that he did. Up wouldn't be the same without the good, good boy. Can we keep him, please, please, please? The circus in A Bug's Life is another reference. The cookie container that they used to travel around is called Casey Jr. Cookies, after the train from Dumbo. When the movie first came out, this was just a reference to a Disney movie, but now that Disney owns Pixar, this old nod to a fellow movie studio became a reference to one of their own. And while some people may not consider it to be a Pixar to Pixar reference, it's such a small, sweet detail that we couldn't help but include it. Really, all that's left to wonder is, what exactly Casey Jr. cookies taste like? One of the most iconic symbols in Up is Ellie's Taste Like Grape Soda Pop cap. But Up wasn't the first time this brand of soda made an appearance in a Pixar film. The first time the soda is seen is in the commercial for the Buzz Lightyear action figure. The soda is seen in a can rather than a bottle, but based on the font, the two are the exact same brand. With this small little tie into the first ever full-length animated picture made by Pixar, Ellie's badge becomes all the more meaningful for fans. And Carl handing off the badge to Russell feels a lot more like the first generation of the studio handing it off to the next. Oh, seriously, can this movie stop making me cry already? Even though Riley is only 11 years old during the events of Inside Out, she already has a giant area for long-term memory. While it would have been easy for the animators to leave each orb with just a color to show what emotion the orb is, they decided to add a little something to each memory orb. It's hard to make out what's in each orb, but in two sadness orbs, it's possible to see two frames from up. One shows Carl and Ellie's wedding, while the one beside it shows the couple's house. It's a little hard to see, but it's a small detail that really makes the movie stand out. And they absolutely chose the right emotions to go with it. The opening to Up can't be described as anything but sad. In Finding Nemo, Dr. Sherman's office is full of little references to other Pixar movies. And one teaser. At the time the movie was released, this little boy waiting for his appointment is reading a comic book that seems like nothing special. But after The Incredibles hit theaters, it suddenly became clear who he was reading about. The comic depicts Mr. Incredible in his first super suit, allowing the eye on his chest to stand out. It's also clear that he's reading about the adventures of Mr. Incredible from before we knew him, and we can't help but feel a little bit jealous. Whatever villain he was taking on, it has to be an amazing story that we may never get to hear. But maybe Pixar will make some prequels? Hopefully? That was excruciating to watch. <laughs> I can't lie to you. But Mr. Incredible isn't the only character hidden at the dentist's. In the toy chest in the corner of the room, a Buzz Lightyear action figure can be seen, face down, waiting for someone to turn him on so he can fly to infinity and beyond. Judging by where he is, though, he's probably not being treated as well as he was with Andy. Still, seems better than his stay at Sunnyside Daycare. It's not just other Pixar movies that get referenced in the films. Early on, Pixar put in a lot of references to their shorts, sometimes even making the main characters of the shorts side characters in the movies. An example of this is with Jerry. First seen in Jerry's game, the old man was shown to play a chess game against himself. Then in Toy Story 2, Jerry is seen again, this time with the tools needed to clean up and fix Woody. It's a small reference that people may have missed at first, but now that the old shorts are getting a place in Disney+, Plus these moments are getting a chance to shine. And it's great to see Jerry doing well and taking up a new hobby. But Jerry isn't the only reference to a short that can be found in the Toy Story series. In the very first Toy Story, the book scenes scattered around the room are named after the different shorts that Pixar had already produced. Titles like Knick Knack and Red Dreams can be seen stowed around the room, not to mention a few other amusing titles like Feet First. It's not clear if the books are the same as the shorts, but whether they are or not, they're bound to be fantastic stories. You are a sad, strange little man, and you have my pity. Farewell. Then there are the references that are more of a nod to past characters and stories. When the brothers in Onward make it to the Manticore's tavern, it's possible to see the open kitchen in the background. While the mouse scene working there probably isn't exactly the same model they had used for Remy and Ratatouille, it's hard to see a mouse in the kitchen and not think of the best chef that Pixar ever had. Why did he leave France? Who knows? Maybe it wasn't enough of a challenge for him, or 
Maybe the promise of new and exciting ingredients pulled him away. In her imagination, Riley has another Pixar Disney crossover. While Princess Dreamworld was turned into a pile of confetti and sparkles by a wrecking ball soon after it was shown, there's no doubt that the castle is familiar. From the white and blue colors to the different towers, Princess Dreamworld is identical to Sleeping Beauty's castle, the same castle that became Disney's logo. It's not a surprise that Riley would associate princesses with Disney, and the entire thing serves as a nice little nod to their parent company. Another clever reference happens in Toy Story 3. When the children enter the daycare, one of them wears a familiar logo on their shirt. With the clear lightning bolt and the large red 95, the young boy with curly hair is clearly a Lightning McQueen fan. Which makes sense, seeing as he can be seen hanging around the racing toys. This can be a little easy to miss, though, seeing as it appears and disappears as fast as the character it's referencing. Of course, this does raise some questions about how the two stories relate to one another. There aren't any people in the Cars universe, so how does this kid know who Lightning McQueen is? Did McQueen start racing before people disappeared? Uh, you know what, on second thought, this clever little reference might be a lot darker than it first appeared. <sighs> but an even smaller and quicker reference happens in Up. When Carl is at the travel agency, a brochure can be seen on the desk, and it's probably meant for Miami, considering who's on it. The sunglasses and hair clearly belong to Sunny Miami, one of the main characters in the short, Knick Knack. The Easter egg is probably the easiest to miss, with how small the image is and the fact that we're too busy bawling our eyes out. Seriously, was that the best place for an Easter egg, Pixar? A better place to put references in would be among the knickknacks, trash, and everything in between that Wally collected. With all sorts of things hidden in his home, Wally's little robo-domicile would be considered a Pixar museum if it were just a little bit more organized. That's not to say that Pixar didn't take the chance to put in Easter eggs. They took the time to place a familiar face on one of the shelves, after all. It can be easy to miss, but the lighting in Wally's home just allows for fans to see Ham hidden among his things. I guess we know he survives whatever depressing twist Toy Story 5 comes up with. Yeah, I thought we could search in style. Nice going there, Ham. And the little pig isn't the only thing in Wally's collection. When everyone's favorite robot first made his way back home, he plays a recording, and in the background, there's a familiar shape. Well, it can be hard to tell, especially because Up came out a year after Wally, but Carl's walking stick can be seen to the right of the TV. While it's rusted with age and upside down, those four tennis balls at the end are too unique for it to be anything else. Of course, the latest teaser has to be one of the most creative. At the start of Onward, when Barley is first introduced, there's a moment where it's possible to see behind him, and on top of a shelf is a collection of vinyls. While it's not clear which of the family members these belong to, we do know what songs are on one of them. It's possible to make out an album that belongs to Dorothea Williams, one of the jazz artists that Joe Gardner wants to impress. It's a small detail, but those always seem to be the most special. Another fun teaser comes from the characters in The Good Dinosaur being portrayed as toys. Surprisingly, this teaser wasn't from Toy Story, but from Monsters University. During the final scare game, the rooms the contestants must enter for the scare simulation are filled with toys. When they're cleaning up the room after Don's scare, an Apatosaurus doll that looks suspiciously like Arlo is swept away making another teaser for the next Pixar movie. And finally, the biggest references to another Pixar movie, both in size and clarity. During Cars 3, when Cruz Ramirez is training the hopeful racers, she notices that one of the cars is feeling homesick. To cheer him up, she pulls up a picture of Santa Cecilia on his monitor. The image was incredibly detailed, especially for something that would only appear for a fleeting moment. But that's because it wasn't only going to show up for a couple of seconds. The image shown is actually one of the main settings in Coco. Santa Cecilia, mi pueblo! Win for them! With so many references to other Pixar movies, it's no wonder that fans have started coming up with theories that link each of the movies together. But no matter how interesting the Pixar theory is, it's never been confirmed. For now, all we can do is comb through each movie to see what other Easter eggs we can find, and try to see if we can't find a hint to the next Pixar film.